My husband and I recently went on our two-year wedding anniversary trip to Maui. Now, as a dermatologist, I thought a lot about the sun protective stuff that I was packing, the sunscreen, the skincare, the clothing, all of it. That Hawaiian sun is no joke, my friends. If you're interested in what a dermatologist packs for a beach vacation, stick around. My name is Dr. Sam Ellis and I'm a board certified dermatologist. I'm here to help you understand your skin and find skincare products that work for you. Let's get right into the good stuff. All of the sunscreens that I brought with me. Now, when my husband saw this bag, he laughed in my face and was like, Sam, we are not going through that much sunscreen. And I was like, Jonah, Yes, we will. Like the nerd that I am, I calculated how much sunscreen to pack. And the way I did this was, when thinking about how much sunscreen one person requires for a full body application, it's about one ounce. And that should be reapplied every couple of hours when out and exposed to the sun. So I accounted for two full body applications of sunscreen, so two ounces per person per day. So two ounces for me per day, two ounces for Jonah per day, four ounces of sunscreen total per day, times six full days of being in Hawaii, I brought 24 ounces of sunscreen. You might be thinking you only covered yourself for four hours of sun exposure per day, but I wasn't doing full body applications of sunscreen most days because I was wearing sun protective clothing either on my upper half or lower half or both. So I was more than covered in terms of bringing enough. One of the things I had to consider when deciding which sunscreens to pack was the fact that in Hawaii, I was going to be exposed to reefs and other marine ecosystems and there are certain concerns about sunscreens being reef safe or reef friendly. Now, a lot of you were asking me on Instagram like, what do we do? What do we bring to Hawaii? The information out there is really conflicting. And I agree, I did a lot of research into this and it's incredibly ambiguous in terms of which UV filters are considered okay for reef exposure and which ones are not. So because of that ambiguity, I went by the laws of Hawaii, which ban a couple of different UV filters. So they ban oxybenzone and octanoxate. So I did not bring any sunscreens with oxybenzone or octanoxate. Other than that, I did pack mostly mineral sunscreens, especially for the days when I planned on being in the water and swimming in the ocean. I did pack a couple of sunscreens with organic or chemical filters for days that I was going to be hiking, but I tried to play by the rules of Hawaii. Also in general, I find sunscreens with mineral UV filters, so zinc oxide and titanium dioxide to be less irritating around the eyes. And since I knew I was gonna be doing a lot of sweating, I would be in a humid environment, I was gonna be swimming, I wanted things that were gonna potentially cause less irritation around my eyes. And then the last thing I looked for in the sunscreens that I brought was 80 minutes of water resistance. Now, I do not typically wear sunscreens with high water resistance on a daily basis because I find them to be a little sticky and a little heavy, but for Hawaii, I was willing to do it. Okay, I've made you wait long enough. Let's get into the specific sunscreens. First up, we have Paula's Choice. This is the super light daily wrinkle defense broad spectrum SPF 30. This is actually the only sunscreen I brought that is not water resistant. And what I packed it for was to wear on the plane. So this came with me in my carry-on. This is a mineral sunscreen. So zinc is the only UV filter in here and it is very lightly tinted. I thought it might leave a white cast on me just because of that mineral UV filter. However, after I let it set up for a couple of minutes, that was not a problem. That being said, I think if you have a more melanin rich skin tone than me, which is a lot of people, <laughs> you might find that this leaves a very, very slight white cast, especially if you're using a full quarter teaspoon. That being said, I thought it went on really lightweight. I had not tried this before the trip and I'm really happy I brought it and became familiar with it. I've been wearing it a lot even since I came home. I really enjoy it. Next up is the Sun Better Advanced Mineral Protection SPF 70. This is water resistant for 80 minutes and it is not tinted. I really like this sunscreen, especially when I am going to have a lot of UV exposure. I kind of save it for that because this is a pretty pricey sunscreen, but it does work really, really well. It goes on as a very thick lotion. So I like to do a pump or two into my hands, warm it up in my fingertips and then apply. It goes on and feels like a little bit greasy initially and then it sort of shears out. It does not give a completely matte finish, but it also doesn't leave me as greasy as some high SPF sunscreens do. I do think if you have a melanin rich skin tone, you might notice a little bit of a cast. 
This does come in a tinted version though, and I think that might be better for people with deeper skin tones. That being said, I just, I really like this sunscreen when I'm going on a beach vacation because every time I put it on, I just feel incredibly protected. Next up, we have the La Roche-Posay Anthelios Melton Milk Sunscreen SPF 100. And you might be going, wow, Ellis, you're really getting up there with the SPFs, SPF 100, is that really necessary? No, it's not necessary, but it helps you stay protected if you're not applying the appropriate amount of sunscreen. So the difference between SPF 50 and SPF 100, if you're actually applying the right amount, is negligible. However, most people don't apply the right amount, and so it does afford you a little bit of extra protection. And that is not just my opinion, that is what the data shows. That being said, this sunscreen is awesome. It rubs in really, really well. It is a chemical sunscreen, so there are no mineral filters in here. It also doesn't have the octanoxate or oxybenzone that are banned in Hawaii. It just rubs in really well. It just goes on, it's smooth. It's a little too greasy for my face, and on the day I did wear it on my face, it got in my eyes and I had some pretty significant stinging, so this is really a body sunscreen for me, but I felt like it was really easy to apply a decent amount and still get it to rub in. No matter how deep or rich you know, in melanin your skin is, this will rub in completely clear, which is huge. And I think that is probably the best part about this sunscreen is you get this very high SPF and it rubs in so unbelievably well. I wore this mostly on days when I was not going to be in the ocean just because I was a little bit nervous about the chemical filters and the coral reefs. So this was my hiking sunscreen, my strolling sunscreen, my kind of like go-to body sunscreen outside of the beach. I also brought another La Roche-Posay sunscreen that was purely mineral. This is their Anthelio Sunscreen Gentle Lotion SPF 50 broad spectrum, and it has titanium dioxide 5%, zinc oxide 15%. I have to admit, I kind of brought this sunscreen with me to get rid of it. It protects my skin so well, but it is really thick. It leaves a very significant white cast. If you have hairy arms or legs, this is not going to rub in that well, but it does protect really well. So I actually did wear this on the beach quite a bit. I never got a sunburn from it. Is this the most like cosmetically elegant sunscreen I've ever put on? Absolutely not, uh, but it does protect. So it's always a balance between protection and cosmetic elegance. And sometimes you get sunscreens that do both really well. This protects, but I don't think I would pick it up again. Moving right along, I have the MD Solar Sciences Mineral Creme SPF 50. This is one that I had not worn a lot prior to the trip, but I loved that it was broad spectrum, zinc based, water resistant for 80 minutes. This is totally one of those sunscreens that's gonna be like a love it or hate it for people. It very much has that dimethicone, silky primer feel. So if you've ever used like a Smashbox photo finish primer where it's got that very silky delivery, that is what this feels like 100%. And when I post about it on Instagram, some of you were like, hate it because of that. Some of you were like, I love it for that reason. This left a very light white cast on me, but then it sort of faded over time. And a lot of you who had deeper skin tones than me messaged me on Instagram and said you didn't have problems with it leaving a white cast on you. So I think that's pretty awesome. I don't know if they sell this in this color tube anymore. They're doing a little rebrand, but for me, this was great for vacation. It's probably not something I personally would like to wear on a daily basis because I personally don't love that sort of dimethicone primer feel, but if I'm going outside or I'm hiking or I'm not gonna be wearing it all day long, I feel totally comfortable and protected wearing this. I wore this on several hikes and I wore it in the ocean and I did not have any problems with it causing eye stinging or it dripping off. So overall, very pleased with the MD Solar Sciences Mineral Creme. So that's all of the body and face sunscreens, but you know I'm extra. I brought lip sunscreens too. So one thing you can do is just take your regular face sunscreen and put it on your lips, but oftentimes that will leave a pretty gross finish and sometimes a really gross taste. So my preference is to have a specific lip product. I don't tend to like ones that are chemical sunscreen based because I'm just so sensitive to that chemical sunscreen taste and I just, I cannot stand it. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I whine about this all the time. So the two that I brought were the Brush On Block Lip Oil. This is SPF 32, it's zinc and titanium dioxide based. This is the color Nude, like that. This is an amazing lip oil. I really, really like this Brush On Block product a lot, uh, and I wore it a ton. It, it's a very glossy finish. It comes in a few colors, but Nude is the one that I brought with me. The other lip sunscreen product that I brought is 
the Jane Iredale Lip Drink. This is only SPF 15, so that blocks 93% of UV rays. That's enough for me. If you're going from not putting anything on your lips to SPF 15, keep at it. Uh, this is the color Flirt. It's sort of like a pink color, very lemony taste. I like that you can kind of put it on, on the go because it's not super highly pigmented. It does only have titanium dioxide in it as its filter, so you're not getting the full broad spectrum of UVA coverage with this, but I'm still very happy with it. Probably my favorite like chapstick that has SPF. I'm on the hunt for one that's SPF 30 though, so if you have a good rec, drop it in the comments. That's the roundup on the sunscreens that I brought on my trip. I do wanna to talk to you a little bit about my skincare routine too, because I definitely change it up when I'm on vacation. My goal for a skincare routine on vacation is to keep it as simple as possible. One, I don't wanna pack all that stuff. Two, I know for me in my skin, the things I'm doing in my skincare routine are for long-term effects. I plan on using all these skincare products for years and years to come. So a week off from my products is not a big deal. Also, things like alpha hydroxy acids can make you more sensitive to the sun. So I didn't bring any acids, exfoliants. I didn't bring a retinoid. I just wanted things to be calm on my skin because I knew I was gonna be getting more sun exposure than usual and also have more physical exfoliation than usual between like towel drying my face at the beach and sand and salt water. Like all of those things are physical exfoliants. So I was getting scrubbed down either way. I did not need to add additional potential irritants to my routine. In the morning, all I would do would be splash water on my face. I would then put on an antioxidant because that was gonna help me fight UV damage over the course of the day. I brought my SkinCeuticals Floritin CF as my antioxidant of choice. After I put my antioxidant on, all I did was put sunscreen on and that was it. I would apply sunscreen periodically throughout the day, but that was all my skincare routine was in terms of like what I did during the day. In the evening, in terms of skincare, my main goal was to take the 1 million layers of sunscreen that I had on my face and get them off and then be just as nourishing as possible to my skin. So I kind of did a double cleanse because I don't think you can get waterproof sunscreen off doing a single cleanse. It's just I've never been able to achieve it. So I used my Bioderma Micellar Water. This is just such a gentle cleansing step. I would just put it on a little cotton pad and sort of wipe off as many layers as I felt like I needed until I was down to just clean skin. And then for my second cleanse, I would go in with this Skin Fix Foaming Oil Cleanser. I only have little samples of these and I save them for vacation. If you tend to have dry or dehydrated skin, but you really like that satisfaction of like a foamy, rich lather, this is a great one. I really enjoy this. This also helped get off a little bit of my waterproof mascara, which I don't wear on a regular basis, but sometimes you need a little bit of like an oily cleanser to help accomplish that. And that's exactly what this did. It also feels super nourishing and not stripping on the skin, which was perfect because my, you know, my skin got beat up during the day between all the activities all of the sun exposure. I just wanted everything to feel good on my skin. And then I'll give you one guess as to what moisturizer I brought. Got it? It was the La Roche-Posay Tolerian Ultra. This is my holy grail moisturizer. So if you know me at all, you probably knew I was bringing this one. Super hydrating, really rich. All I wanted to do in the evening is just replenish, replenish, replenish. And that was this. And after that, I went to bed. Oh. I almost forgot the other, I think we can call this skincare. The other thing I brought with me was self tanner. Now I did my own self tanner at home before I left for my trip, but I knew that a few days in it would probably be fading. And I just didn't want any temptation to go out into the sunlight and get a real suntan. So by bringing a little backup self tanner, I just felt like there's zero temptation to like get some color. I picked up the Coco and Eve Sunny Honey Travel Kit before I left. So this was like a bit of a leap of faith because I had not used this bronzing situation before, but very happy with with it. It came with, you know, a mitt and then just like a small bronzing foam. This was awesome. It smells delicious. It smells like a tropical fruit smoothie. It went on really well. I had zero streakiness. It did not like read orange on my skin tone at all. 
And the other thing is it lasted for like a whole week. So I was back from Hawaii and I got to like look bronze for a couple of extra days. So it was awesome. I would definitely bring this with me on vacation again. I also brought some makeup on my trip. I brought like the essentials, but it still felt like a decent amount of makeup. And then I pretty much wore none of it. So I'm gonna talk about literally the three things that I wore. Did not touch the rest of my makeup bag. So one is my It Cosmetics CC Cream. This is a very, very full coverage CC cream. So I just used the very smallest amount. It is SPF 50, but again, because I I'm using such a small amount. I'm not using it for the SPF. I'm really using it more to even out my skin tone. Because I have rosacea, when I'm exposed to a lot of sun, I get pretty darn rosy. And that just like takes the redness away from me. It's not an essential, but it just makes me feel a lot more confident when I have it on. So I did pretty much wear it every single day. I also liked that it helped take away some of the white cast from some of my mineral sunscreens that I was wearing. So I felt very good about that. The other thing I brought on vacation is this Maybelline Lash Sensational waterproof mascara. I'm not really a waterproof mascara girl on a regular basis, but of course I was gonna be in a humid environment. I was gonna be in and out of the ocean. I did not want to be looking like a raccoon the whole time. So having this is great because it just kept my lashes full and long and not smudged. And it was great. Even with having sunscreen like up and around my eyes, I didn't end up with any sort of transfer over the course of the day. So I was very pleased with that selection. And then the last thing I brought is my Anastasia Beverly Hills Clear Brow Gel. I wear this pretty much every single day, whether I'm on vacation or not. Without it, my eyebrows are very, they're just very sad. They're almost like frowning. So this just helps like lift them up, give them a little bit of fluff and hold them in place. And I just feel, so much more confident when my brows are in position. So these are the three things that I wore and I was very happy with that makeup selection for the trip. So we've reviewed what I used for sunscreen, skincare, makeup, but I think a huge category of things that I packed that absolutely cannot be ignored is sun protective clothing. I rely on this even more than I rely on sunscreen to keep me protected. And I brought a handful of things that served me super well. So first up, hats. I think if you're thinking about a beach vacation, you should be focusing on hats with a wide brim. Wide brim to me is three inches or larger. And really it's a brim that should go all the way around. If you just have like a baseball cap, you're really leaving your cheeks and your chin and your neck completely exposed. I would say it's better than nothing, but if you can have a, like a full, 360 wide brim. That is my preference. This one is from Uniqlo. I bought this this season. It was kind of giving me like 90s bucket hat vibes. Really liked this hat. It's really lightweight. The cool thing is that it is UV protective. There's this little string inside of it that you can adjust how tight it is. So when you're at the beach or you're hiking, it can be really windy. So it's really nice to have a hat that is secured on either with a strap or some type of adjustable rim, or if it fits you perfectly, then that's amazing. But that hat was a great purchase and I'm really happy that I have it. Another wide brim option that I brought is the Sunday Afternoons Gardening Visor. It's very easily packable because it rolls up like this and it's easy to just toss in your beach bag. And then when I'm packing it for a trip, I usually just stuff this cone with socks and underwear so it doesn't get totally squished inside my luggage. There are a lot of these sort of roll up visors. I have tried a lot off of Amazon and then basically returned all of them because they all felt pretty flimsy. But this one, the construction is solid. The brim feels nice and stiff. The nice thing too is that the visor, there's this little area in the back where the rim doesn't go completely around. So if you're like lounging in a beach chair and you wanna put your head back, you're not like ramming it with this big wide rim. I also have a, like a visor very similar to this that I wear when I'm driving for kind of the similar reason. And I wore this at the beach chilling. If we went on like a little walk, this is what I would put on. And I really like this one. The last hat that I brought, I'm like almost embarrassed to show you. It is like so stained with sweat and grime because I've had it for at least half a decade. They don't even make this anymore at REI. They make similar ones, but just not the exact same style. And then Outdoor Research and Sunday Afternoons have similar hats to this, which is sort of like a paddler style. It's got this nice foam stiff brim and then like a chin strap here. So if you're hiking and it's windy, you don't have to worry about losing it. Is this the sexiest hat I own? No, but it is moisture wicking. I feel really protected in it. It scrunches up super small for packing. Like I said, it's got the chin strap. So if it's like windy out, you can look like a real dork, but I always feel protected when I wear this hiking and it is, it's my favorite hat that I own. You absolutely do not have to bring three wide brim hats on a beach vacation. That is me. I am extra. I'm a dermatologist. 
I need options. Last but certainly not least is UPF clothing. UPF stands for ultraviolet protection factor and is sort of the most reliable rating that we have to determine how well clothing filters out harmful UV rays. If an item of clothing has a UPF of 50, that means that only 1 50th of potentially sunburn causing UV light can actually get through that item of clothing. The ultraviolet protection factor of an item of clothing is really dependent on a lot of different things like the material, the color of the item, the density of the weave, the complexity of the fiber. So I like to own a few things that have been specifically UPF rated so I know exactly what I'm getting. It doesn't mean that other clothing that doesn't have a UPF rating doesn't protect you from the sun. We've all seen a farmer's tan. We do know that t-shirts offer some degree of UV protection, but like I said, I like owning a few specific UV protective items because it makes me have that, just that peace of mind. One thing I got asked surprisingly a lot is whether you have to wear sunscreen under UPF clothing. And I definitely do not. That is my excuse to not wear sunscreen. Plus it would just be like such a sticky mess. So no, I do not wear sunscreen under any type of UPF gear. So here are some of the UPF items I brought. One is this rash guard from Land's End. This is just like a black, simple rash guard. I would wear this pretty much any day that I was at the beach. I would put on my bikini bottoms and then wear this rash guard on top so that when I was out snorkeling and looking at all the fishies, I was not worried that my backside was cooking. That is UPF 50. Coolie Bar also makes a really awesome some UPF swim shirt, but this one's super lightweight. So it was really nice for being in Hawaii. Another thing I brought is from Coolie Bar and it's their beach shawl. This is something that I bring on pretty much every vacation, not just beach vacations. I bring it in my carry-on and it works as like a blanket on the plane or like a little pillow, but then it unfolds into this like nice, like lightweight wrap. It can be worn as a scarf or as a shawl if you get cold. I bring it in my beach bag too, because if it's really sunny out, I like to like lay it over my legs while I'm sitting under an umbrella so they're not getting extra sun exposure. But to me, that is like the most versatile item. Like I said, I bring it on every single trip with me. It's UPF 50, so every time I have it, I'm just very well protected. The only other truly UPF shirt I brought was this long sleeve. This is from Cabana Life. This is really cool in terms of its technology because the underside of the arms is all this like lightweight mesh. So the top part of your arms gets covered with UPF protective clothing. And then the underside is very breathable with mesh. So I would just kind of like wear that over anything I was hiking in. And of course there are going to be times when it gets way too hot to wear long sleeves. And that's when I bust out the sunscreen, but if you're starting a morning hike and it's a little cool or you get sweaty at the top of a hike and then it gets breezy and you want some protection. That's what I use that for. I also picked up a couple of pairs of UPF bottoms. I didn't even know they were UPF when I bought them. I got them at target and then I was taking the labels off and I was like, and they're UPF 50, such a win. So, this is by their All In Motion brand. I just got their like little black lightweight shorts. They've got like a zip pocket in the back, a zip pocket on the side. It's only like 25 bucks. The quality was amazing. They dried down super quickly, amazing for hiking. So I got those shorts and then I got the cropped pants in the exact same style. I mean, having a lightweight hiking pant is great. Like I said, I don't like putting on body sunscreen when I don't have to. So having just a couple of UPF bottoms was awesome. There you have it. That is how a dermatologist packs for a beach vacation. What are your vacation must haves? I really wanna know. I'm, I'm always trying to make it better. Put them in the comments below. Please like and subscribe and come hang out with me on Instagram and I'll see you next time.